what? I told you all, y'all's going to help me today. Faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word, right? So faith can, we, it's a, something that we believe in whether we see it or not, right? We, we believe it because the word says that faith can move a mountain, right? That we can speak to that and watch it be gone, right? So how many of us know that it takes wisdom to use that faith? Hello? Now, you can have all the faith in the world and, uh, you know, and still not have wisdom, Hmm. And some of us can have all wisdom and no faith. Hello. You see, they, they, they work together. And sometimes we forget that because we, we're charismatic. Hello. Come on. We get excited every once in a while. You know, we, we love to shout every once in a while. Hey, we we'll even run every once in a while, right? And uh, you got to watch Sister Kim. She'll take off in a moment. You, you get in the way, she'll knock you over. I'm just saying. But... Uh, but sometimes we forget about that part of wisdom because we, we want to see things happen. We, we want what we want, right? We want our loved ones to be well. We don't want them to be sick. We want our family to prosper. We don't want them to have to struggle, right? So we put faith in God to do these things. But sometimes it takes some wisdom to make these things work because how many of us know that we can't live just on faith? Hello. Now, I, I've talked to several people about this deal. And so, please, nobody get mad at me, but just let, hear me out for today. Hmm. But because sometimes we put so much faith in everything, we forget about the wisdom of God. Because you see, we had the, the word teaches us to be what wise stewards of things, correct? So I, I've had people say, "Well, you know, uh, I, I I just live by faith." I'm like, "Well, how's that working?" Because I'm telling you, you know, I, I can go spend all my money today and not have nothing in the bank on Monday and say, "God, you're going to plenish that." Hello. Now, not saying God can't do it, but the Word teaches us to have wisdom in all things, especially when we apply it to our faith, right? So he said, well, you know, I, I, I got all the faith in the world. I said, well, I do too, but I know I'm not going to play in the middle of the road. Hello. Now, I know God can protect me, but he gives me enough wisdom not to get out there, especially whenever people are trying to get home. Hello. How many of y'all have ever been on Ashland City Highway around 2.30 to between 2.30 and 4 o'clock? Hello. They will run over you because you're in their pathway of getting home. They're ready to get home. They don't care about anything else. They don't want to stop at no stores. Hello. Let me tell you. My wife would call me and say, hey, you mind stopping at the store? I'm like, oh, my gosh. No, because if I stop at the store, then I'm going to get stuck in the other traffic. I just want to go home. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> but today, I, I want us to take a look at Joseph this morning. You have your Bibles, turn me over to Genesis chapter 41. Now, I've, I've preached some sermons about Joseph. I've preached about it, the coat of many colors. I preached on a sermon one time that God gave to us about uh, coming out of the pit. And, uh, you know, I preached on one one time about, you know, not being alone. So, but there's so much stuff here. But the one thing I want us to look at today in Joseph is the wisdom. Amen. You have your Bibles turning me over there, and we're going to start in verse 37. So. Technology is great when it works, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Starting in verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of his servants. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such as one as this as a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee, Thee all this, 
there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy, to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than you. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. Verse 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Let us pray. Father God, once again, we thank you for this day. God, we thank you for your many blessings, O Lord. God, we thank you, Lord, that we can have the, the faith to stand. But God, we can have the wisdom to use that faith when to stand. So this morning, Lord... As your word comes forth, I pray this morning that every ear and every heart is open. And God, that we not only hear it, but Lord, we receive it as well. And Father, once again, I ask you, O Lord, to anoint these old clay lips as you continue to hide me behind that cross of Calvary. And I ask this in the mighty name of Jesus. And amen. You see, Joseph was made a ruler. But let's back up just a little bit here. Let's look at what all transpired in Joseph's life. You see, Joseph wasn't just... He, he, his brothers sold him out, threw him in a pit, went home and told him, Dad, that he died. He got killed. So as far as his father and him knew, he, he was gone. And then all of a sudden now, he gets brought into the land of Egypt there, and Pharaoh and all of them takes him in, and the next thing you know, he's made ruler over certain areas, and then all of a sudden, he gets false accusations made against him. Hello. And the next thing you know, he's thrown back in prison again. But yet, while he was in prison, he was still made ruler over the prison. I'm like, can you imagine that? The favor of God, so strong upon you, because he knows what you're going to do for his sake. You see, sometimes we think that God operates on this timeline that he can only do things that we tell him we need him to do. We think we are the ones telling God what to do. Can I tell you today that God does not need our help? He knows exactly what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. We didn't need, we're the ones that need God's help on how to activate the wisdom to do the things we need to do, and the faith to carry them out when we need to do them. But Joseph, he, he had this... It was not peaches and creams for this guy. If you read that whole story of Joseph, you'll realize that he had many problems that you and I be like, oh my. I, I know I heard people talk about Job sometime, right? How, how everything happened to Job and why all these things. But can I tell you that God has a purpose and a plan for all of us? That he wants to use us in the timely that we can be used. The word says that we have not because we ask not. We don't have the wisdom because we don't ask for the wisdom. We just want the faith. We just want that part that says, hey, let me go do this here. And then you take care of everything else and I'll do what I need to do. You know, can you just imagine a young boy that was loved by his dad so much, sold out by his brothers, but yet he still had compassion for his brothers? Even though he was put into prisons and everything else? You see, I want us to take a look at this one scripture here. Because maybe y'all didn't catch it at first, but... It kind of astonished me along the way. In verse 38, it says, And Pharaoh said unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man, in whom the Spirit of God is? Hello. Can I tell you that even your enemies will know that you or a man and a woman of God. Hmm. See, we look at Pharaoh and we think of him as this ruler that ruled with an iron fist, right? 
Hey, he was a guy that sat up on the throne and he, he was over the one that made all of them slaves and he kept them in captivity and, you know. But can I tell you that even Pharaoh recognized that Joseph was a man of God and he recognized it vocally to everyone. Hmm. You see, Joseph wasn't just some dreamer. He wasn't just some fanatic over here, some prophet that would just go around prophesying over everything. Hello? We've had a few of them, right? Hmm. There is such thing as prophetic word, and there are such thing as prophets. Hello? But whenever we prophesy over everything, hmm, maybe we need to rethink that just a moment. But you see, Pharaoh had these dreams, and he called for his magicians. You read it in the scripture, it's there. He called for his magicians, and they all come in there trying to cipher out these dreams. Hmm. You know, and, and I, I may get in trouble for this, but I'm going to say it anyway. There's been a few times I thought about, you know what? I wonder if I could go to a fortune teller and they could tell me that I am a man of God. Hmm. I wonder what kind of facade they would put on for me. What kind of little doohitcher would they break out or whatever, you know. And then next thing you know, I could get up with my oil and anoint them and pray that demon out of them. And all. I mean, you know, come on, I, I had these things. You know, I had the thoughts. I, mean, I, I do. I, <laughs> that's why y'all like me so well, because I have these weird thoughts sometimes, you know. But, you know, I, I said, you know, but God says not to tempt the Lord thy God either, right? Hello. I don't need to go to a fortune teller for them to tell me that I'm a man of God. I don't, need them, I don't need to go to fortune teller for them to tell me that I can have a prophetic word. I don't need them to come and tell me that I can be a prophet. Hello? God's the one that's going to give me that instruction. God's going to give me that wisdom. He's the one that's going to tell me what we need to do. But you see, Joseph interpreted those dreams for Pharaoh. That nobody else could even interpret. Even this word says, that even the magician says... I'm sorry, man, we, we just don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you ate some bad beans or something other than had a weird dream. I don't know, you know. Hello. But sometimes we treat God the same way. We, we go in there and we say, okay, God, I, I need this here. And then, but God, I, I'm treating you like a genie in a bottle. I just want to bring you down when I need something other than I'll put you back up whenever I'm done. I, I, God, I, I need your help with this right here, but, you know, yeah, I, yeah I, I'm not being obedient. Hello. You know, I, how many of us know that we can go to a church service anywhere and around? And we can have, say, for instance, Brother Colton had diabetes. And all of a sudden, he came up, and the Lord was just moving on him. And he came up, and he says, hey, I, I'm struggling with diabetes, and I know that the Lord is here, and I know that he can heal me, so I'm, I'm wanting a healing today. How many of us know God can heal him of that? Come on. Our God is, has no limits at all, I'm telling you right now. I have some, each and every one of us have some testimonies in here. We know that we serve a good God. And all of a sudden, Colton comes up, and then he, he feels the presence of God, and he's like, hmm, I feel better. He goes to the doctor a few weeks later because he has a checkup due then. He goes there, and the doctor says, man, I don't know what happened. Where did the diabetes go? I, God healed me. But then Colton turns right around and does not change his eating habits. He still likes that banana pudding. Mm. Man. 
the chocolate cakes. Hello, come on. Mm. The moon pies. Yes, I know. Yeah, come on. Don't ooh me. Come on now. You know it. It's good. And then all of a sudden, you know, he, he still dabbles in those sweets. You see, we have to have the wisdom, even after God heals us, to do the right thing. To do the right things. Because how many of us know we can give back the gift that God gives to us through a healing? Hello? Because if I, I can get healed from that, but then I don't take care of myself, guess what? No, I'm not talking on eating habits today, okay? I really ain't. Let me give you another one then. Let's take your mind off of food. Man, that's good though. Banana pudding sounds so good. Uh, how many of y'all like to go on trips? Yeah? Do y'all plan your trips out real well? Yeah? So, imagine yourself getting on an airplane one day and you're going to, you're traveling from here and you're traveling, say, to um, Wisconsin because you want to see Green Bay play. Come on, I mean, you know, whoever. Ain't no Green Bays? I don't know, whatever. All right, just hang with me here for just a moment, okay? And you get on the airplane and it's like 70 degrees here and you think, man, this is awesome. You pack lightly. You're just like, okay. And you step off the airplane in Wisconsin, and it's like a negative 20. Hello. Tennessee's about the same, right? If, if you don't like the weather right now, just hang on a little while. It's going to change, I'm sure. Something's going to happen, you know. You're going to have another cold front come through, you know. But... Joseph was the same way. Joseph used his wisdom in guidance of what God wanted him to do. Because let me, let me share this with you. And over in verse 25, Joseph says this, Joseph said unto Pharaoh, The dream of Pharaoh is one God had showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. You see, he knew that God had gave him that dream of what to do. So, there was a famine that was coming. It was going to be a good harvest for seven years. And then there was going to be a famine thereafter. So wisdom told Pharaoh through Joseph that, look, we, we need to do something here. We need to put something back for hard times. Hello. So many of us today, we're just like, let's cash that check. Let's go. Hello. But when we need to realize that we need the wisdom in order to continue to abide in faith. Faith can move mountains. Hmm. The children of Israel had faith to walk around that thing several times, didn't they? Hmm. But you see, Joseph traveled through so many things. And yet, but he was used by God through his wisdom. Not just his soothsaying or fortune telling or any of that stuff. No, it was wisdom that directed Joseph into Pharaoh's life in order for Pharaoh to actually call him a man of God. How many of you know today that God is wanting to use you as a man or a woman of God with divine wisdom that can speak into somebody's life? But the problem of it is we don't like change sometimes. We don't, we don't want somebody messing up or saying something or other that's going to cause us to have to change our lifestyle, so to speak. I know I, I, I've been to the doctor several times and he always tells me, you know, hey, you got to watch what you eat. I said, I do. I watch it go in. It's okay. Hello. You know? And it's good. <laughs> and I tell him, I said, and, and I said, and the Lord said it was good. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> but he reminds me, he said, no, you got to watch some of that stuff. But let's look at Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6. It says, For the Lord giveth wisdom out of his mouth, 
cometh knowledge and understanding. You see, if we want the wisdom, as James says, those who lack in wisdom, let him ask, and God will give. Hello? Over in Colossians, turn me chapter 4, verse 5. It says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. We need to walk in our wisdom, church. Now, I know we've had so many things happen. None of us ever planned on being in this era that we're in right now. You see, we, we, we'll plan for little trips. We'll plan for programs. We'll plan for things to take place. Which is good, like our, our food giveaway for Thursday, man, it's going to be awesome. We do it every time, it's good. Clothing giveaway, we do that. VBS, we do that. We plan those things out. But can I tell you, we did not plan for everything to affect us the way it has. So what do we do? Do we just stand with faith? No, we use wisdom in the time that we're in. Because we want to make sure that what everybody can receive something from the Lord, right? It's time for us to get about the Father's business. To tell people how good God is. To show people how good God is. You know, there's nothing more satisfying than be in a house or a room filled with faithful believers that says, God, you are the one true God and you can do anything. I stand in awe of you, Lord. God, grant me that wisdom to speak when I need to speak. Because can I tell you, some people speak when they don't need to. Hello? Mm. Some people don't listen when they need to listen. Because we don't want somebody coming there telling us, Oh, that's... I'm going to hit this home today. I'm going to tell you. Nobody likes us telling us what to do with our money, do they? But can I tell you what the Word says? It says to bring your tithe into the storehouse. Hello. And you wonder why you struggle every day, every week, all the time? It's because you know why? You're not being obedient to the Word of God. Not to me, not to Hope Worship Center, but to the Lord Himself. When we start being obedient and use that wisdom that says, okay, God, I'm going to listen to what you're telling me because there's a reason why. If, if God can't trust me with 90%, he sure ain't going to trust me with 100%. Hello? Too many times we just tip God because we say, hey, here's this, here's that. But can I tell you what Joseph did? Joseph, he stored it back and he gave it back. Hello? Not only did he give it back Individually, but multiply, he gave it back. But we want to come in here and we go, oh, well, you know, church has got all the money they need. Hello. It's not about the church. It's about obedience to the Lord. Trust me. That's a hard pill to swallow. Hello. I remember a time in my life that we came back to the Lord and I needed some tools, and my wife tithed on the monies. And I didn't have enough monies to get the tools. I was mad. Oh, yeah. I, was, I said, woman, what is wrong with you? And she goes, what are you talking about? I said, look. I worked hard all week to get paid. And I need this tool to be productive in my work. And if I don't have the tool, I can't be productive. So why are you giving my money away? And she said, well, first of all, it's not your money. <laughs> oh, yeah. She said, it's our money. I'm like, well, we'll wait a minute now. <laughs> Let's don't get technical here. And I, I remember I said, but why did you do that? She said, because the word said so. And I said, well, the word ain't paying our bills. Hmm. 
Trust me. When God got done with me, I was a total mess. He not only showed me in the word what it meant, but he showed it me through people at what it meant. And I remember that evening going home. And I looked at my wife and I asked her where the checkbook was. She said, there ain't nothing in there. I said, it don't matter. And we took that checkbook and we laid it on the table and we prayed over and we said, God, this is yours. Every dime, every cent, every nickel, every penny, every ounce of this, God, is yours. Give us wisdom on how to manage your finances. Not saying times never got tough, but God always supplied. Can I tell you, there, there has never been a time that I went without food, lights, water, or anything because God is faithful. Hello? When we don't use wisdom on what God's direction is for our lives, how do we expect to be productive in today's society? How do we expect to be in God's favor when we're not his favorite? Hello? Come on. Ah! Ah, it's okay to holler at me too, okay? You don't have to hate me. You can go, ah! It's all good. Because when we realize that what God's expectations of us is, is so minimal to what we expect of God. Oh, yeah. God just says, be obedient. In all things, be obedient. And when we do that, then He will give unto us the uttermost part of things of this world. Hello? But we don't want the wisdom to do the right things. We just want the faith to step out there and do it. Just let me go. Put me in, coach. I ain't got no helmet. That's okay. Put me in. Hello? Yet? Oh, give me the car. I ain't got no gas to drive it, but give me the car. It's okay. What use is it sitting there on an empty tank? But you got the new car. We were, we were driving around and we were looking at different stuff and on the Facebook marketplace, he says, hey, here's your tractor for like 600 bucks. I'm like, what? Where? Hey, there we go. Yeah, yard ornament. <laughs> Don't need that. We need to operate in the wisdom that God gives us to activate the faith that he gives us. So many times we want to we wanna do our own thing. I heard that saying that says, be all you can be, right? I'm self-made. Oh, no. Mm -mm. No. I'm God-made. I'm only who I am because of who He is in me. I'm only as good as I am because He's so good to me. I can only operate in the wisdom of God that he gives unto me. When are we going to catch up and realize that, hey, I need the wisdom to activate and to carry out the faith within me? Hmm. You wouldn't let your children play with a butter knife around a light socket, would you? Well, maybe you would, I'm just saying. I'm <laughs> like, hey, watch this. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's the way we are acting in our Christian walk today when we don't live and abide in the wisdom of God. That's why we get defeated sometimes as children of God. The enemy knows how to defeat us. But we should have the wisdom to know how to defeat him. When to speak. When to pray. When to sing. When to rejoice. We quote that scripture all the time. Philippians 4.13. Hey. I can do all things through Christ. Who strengthens me. 
Oh, we'll, we'll run with that like a bucket of water. But when we get there, we realize that half the water sloshed out. And we don't have near as much as we thought we did. Wisdom says, walk softly with the bucket. Carry it all there at once. Lose none on the way. Word says, abide in him for he abideth in you. Be obedient to the word because he already has favor and everything you need for you. I hope today that we can carry out of here something from this word today that's going to cause us to check our wisdom level that says, look, I need God's wisdom. I don't need my wisdom. I don't need man's wisdom. I need your wisdom, O Lord, to be able to function and do what you need me to do. I can't be the dad. I can't be the person of God. You can't be the man or woman of God. You can't be the parent of God. Unless you have the wisdom to guide and direct in all areas of their lives. We have a lost and dying world that's looking for somebody to give them hope and direction. I'd heat rather give them the wisdom of God's direction versus my direction. It's not about how many people we can get in here, but it's about how many people we can get into heaven. So this morning, ask yourself, am I being full of wisdom when God needs me to be? Or am I only using partial wisdom so I can get what I want, when I want it, and how I want it. Hmm. Stand with me this morning. Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 13, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. Hmm. There's nothing wrong with having faith. I have so much faith. But my faith does me no good without the wisdom. To use that faith. My heart is human. And when I see someone is in distress, someone is in need, my compassion level goes up and I want to help so much. I want to give so much. But I'm reminded of Paul, you know, and throughout his journeys, the things that he gave unto people. And I'm also reminded of the blind man or the lame man that was laying at the gate. Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have is the kingdom of God. Rise up and walk wisdom wisdom gave him the unction to produce the faith to tell that lame man to get up and walk it had been just as easy to toss one of them little coins over to him and say well have a great day the lady with the issue of blood she had faith she had divine faith that she knew Wisdom told her if she could just get to the hem of his garment, just to the hem, she would be made whole. Sometimes we have that feeling about us. That's God saying, hey, hold on. Or saying, God saying, go get them. Let us today, 
let us activate that wisdom even more. We need that. In everyday walk, we need that. Father, this morning, as we humble ourselves before you, God, once again, we pray for ourselves. God, we need that wisdom. That divine wisdom that only you can give, oh Lord. That will cause even our enemies to recognize that we are children of the Most High God. Let us abide in your favor. Let us abide in your grace. But Father, most of all, let us abide in your understanding. We need your wisdom. To be able to go into this world that we did not expect to take place the way it is doing right now. We had no idea. But God, nothing, nothing surprises you. So this morning, we ask for your wisdom on how to be productive for your kingdom and your glory. We ask that right now in the mighty name of Jesus.